without any further ado, uh, Neil, over to, to yourself. Thank you very much. Thanks, Juan. Thank you very much, Rick. Um, yeah, thanks to everyone who's, who's spoken already so far today. Um, yeah, my my talk uh, this morning is going to be talking about uh, yeah future proofing your digital strategy and walking through a roadmap towards uh, digital maturity. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm Neil. I work for Search Laboratory, um, and we specialize in global digital channel execution, uh, driving profitable growth for our clients through data led approaches. Um, I've been working in paid media and, and digital marketing generally for about eight years, but currently my focus is on, on digital strategy, uh, working with clients to help better understand uh, their data and find new and exciting opportunities for, for how we can help them grow. So to set the scene um, for kind of the, the rest of this presentation, just going to touch quickly on a few of the themes that we're we're kind of seeing develop in the the digital landscape as we see it in in twenty twenty four. Um. So the first one I'm going to touch on here, uh, as most of us will be more than well aware by now, our industry is is, is currently facing off against ever increasing data privacy concerns. Uh, and the impending sunset of, of third-party cookies, which is going to have a fairly monumental impact on, on everything we do. Um, this is already having an impact on, on how we track behavior online, and it's only going to develop further as the year and kind of you know, subsequent years pass by. Um, yeah, in case you've been living under a rock, you know everybody knows that AI has been a huge topic of conversation over the last 12 months. Uh, thanks partly to the advancement of various Gen AI tools uh, and chatbot tools, you know, chat GPTs, BARDs, et cetera. Um, but it also forms a very integral part of the marketing platforms that we rely on day to day. So Google Ads, Meta, Amazon, et cetera, they've all got their own versions of AI bidding technology, uh, you know, the so-called black box type campaigns that promise to deliver better results, but potentially at the expense of you know, more detailed and uh, kind of granular reporting and, and controls that we've become quite accustomed to as, as digital marketers. Um, and as we move further into 2024, uh, unfortunately, what we're seeing is that economic uncertainty is predicted to continue. So many brands are you know, looking at tightening their purse strings, but, you know, at the kind of same time, relying on digital growth more than ever. Um, so there's quite a complicated set of factors which, you know, potentially are at play uh, out there in the, in the current landscape. <clears throat> in addition to the, the kind of headline news that kind of ran through on that, that previous slide, you know, it, it doesn't stop there. There's even more obstacles for, for, for marketers to dodge on a, almost a daily basis. So um, many businesses, do tend to become over-reliant on, on ROAS targets um, that are inconsistent across channels, which can lead to you know, an overly narrow focus on that kind of idea of immediate returns. Um, this approach tends to miss the bigger picture and typically ends up neglecting the longer term brand building type activities uh, and activities that may be further up the funnel from your typically favored uh, last click activities like your, you know, brand search, for example. Uh, these effects, yeah, generally are further then compounded by traditional attribution models, such as last click, which really oversimplified the, the user journey and can undervalue or entirely miss altogether important steps along the path to conversion. Um, and on top of this, the potential insights from uh, integrating marketing data with sales, customer service, or other areas of the business, uh, they're frequently overlooked. So there's often a disconnect between marketing efforts and other business functions, which then leads to fragmented strategies, wasted resources, and yeah, I guess this idea of just decision-making in silos, which uh, doesn't kind of combine to, to benefit the business as a whole. So what does this mean in, in relation to, you know, us as marketers and kind of people in working in digital? Um, so what we typically see uh, with clients following this type of path 
uh, is a, a period of initial growth as they implement isolated channel strategies and you know start following best practices at a channel level um you know optimize ad copy you know start kind of testing out different strategies etc you'll see this initial period of growth but after a point and this this may take a while to reach this initial period may may be quite large um eventually sooner or later this business will start to see diminishing returns uh and stunted growth as they kind of enter this performance plateau um and yeah at this point you know you can kind of start to spend hours digging into uh you know never-ending channel reports looking at you know different segments of, of things here and there uh relentless a b testing or you know desperately trying to find other approaches to try and eke out those extra margins um but invariably where we find the new growth opportunities are really unlocked comes through tapping into frameworks that enhance digital maturity and provide that information that's that's necessary to the business to be able to start making smarter decisions. So what is digital maturity and how can you help your business grow using the tools available? <laughs> um, so yeah, the study that was conducted by the Boston Consulting Group and Google um, back in 2021, they found that digitally mature brands uh, tended to experience an 18% increase in revenue, but for a 29% reduction in spend compared to their more developing counterparts. Um, so this research followed on from the development of this digital maturity benchmark, which was produced by Google and BCG in, in 2019. Um, and what this is, is a, a benchmarking report, essentially. It's a, a tool to help businesses to yeah, uncover where exactly they stand compared to industry best practices. Um, and this is something which, which you know, anyone can access freely online um, via the link that's, that's just under the title there on the screen. Um, so the way this works in practice is you, you go online, you fill out a questionnaire covering various aspects of your marketing activities. Then after gathering some further information about how your business operates, Google will produce a report which then scores you across a number of different dimensions, including things like attribution, assets, uh, audience, and, and automation. Uh, from here on, you can then create an action plan to help unlock your next phase of growth. Um, and yeah, following up from the stats on the, the previous slide, a couple of other um, kind of pieces of information that came from this study were that uh, only 9% of businesses are making full use of their insights and technology. Um, but actually, digitally mature companies are, are twice as likely to grow their market share over a 12-month period compared to, again, you know, less digitally mature companies. So I guess, yeah, just highlighting again how much potential there is in, in kind of working through this um, framework uh, and uncovering the insights that are going to be truly valuable to, to advancing your business along this maturity scale. So speaking of the maturity scale, this is what it actually looks like and the, the stages that you can be kind of working through if you're looking at this benchmark. Um, yeah, as I said, the report measures a whole host of different factors across your digital and offline data landscapes. Um, and then, yeah, takes your answers and, and kind of industry knowledge to assign you a rank according to these four levels of, of maturity. So firstly, we've got the, the nascent or sort of fundamental stage, uh, followed by emerging and connected stages before finally moving on to the, the multi-moment stage, aka you know, fully mature businesses. So taking a look to see what this actually looks like in practice, I've got a breakdown here of um, some of the characteristics that you typically see as at each stage of this um, framework. So starting off with the, the nascent stage, um, at this point, you know, businesses are still operating with a very limited digital strategy, um, you know, relying on basic online advertising methods. Um, they'll have a heavy reliance on third-party data for the marketing decisions. Uh, 
marketing efforts are typically confined to a single channel focus. So potentially just email, social media, or paid search, for example, with no real integration going on between those channels. Um, there will also be a, yeah, a minimal use of, of analytics as well. So, you know, whatever analytics that are available, um, usage is going to be basic, uh, you know, the information that's been fed through to that and into reporting uh, isn't really going to be used for uh, anything particularly advanced and certainly far away from anything uh, that can resemble strategic decision making. Moving up into the uh, emerging stage, uh, businesses will be starting to integrate their own customer data uh, as so, you know, first party data, email lists, for example, uh, into those marketing strategies. Um, they'll be getting to be starting experiment with uh, automation. So looking at tools for automating simple tasks within the advertising and marketing space. Um, marketing will begin to start spanning across multiple channels. So, you know, adding in, um, you know, more channels to the mix than previously were in use at the first stage. Um, but these will still not be fully integrated or optimized or, you know, working in harmony with one another just yet. Um, and yeah, also at this stage, we'll start to see uh, digital skills within the business uh, and the partners that they work with will be uh, starting to develop. So there'll be a growing focus on upskilling the team and in, in the uh, the tools and analytics required to um, start advancing further along this framework. At the, the third stage, the connected stage, um, what we see now is businesses starting to leverage customer data quite extensively uh, to inform marketing strategies and starting to get quite clever with the use of the first party data that they've, they've gathered from, from the customers. Um, the, the channel marketing strategies do become much more integrated. So the marketing efforts are now more coordinate, coordinated across the different channels, you know, social media, paid social, uh, email efforts will be much more uh, tied together um, along the journey. And in addition to this, the loss will be starting to look at how we can enhance uh, the you know, personalization for the customer based on insights that are being gathered. Um, so yes, yeah, starting to, to really build on that from, from the first party data again. And finally, moving into the, the multi-moment or you know fully mature stage. <clears throat> At this point, businesses are really sophisticated in their use of data, um, starting to use methods like predictive analytics and uh, artificial intelligence to try and anticipate what what customer needs are and you know what the behaviours are going to be based on different events that may have taken place. Uh, you know, opening an email, viewing different pages on the website, downloading certain reports, etc. Um, yeah, we kind of move from this idea of, of reactive uh, marketing and, and kind of uh, actions based on, on, I suppose, previously reported actions to real-time decision-making. So, you know, the strategies can be adapted in real-time based on continuous data that's flowing, um, you know, into, a, into the, the kind of machine learning strategies. Um, at this point, yeah, again, that the, the the ecosystem is is fully integrated. So all digital marketing channels uh, and platforms everywhere where the data is flowing in and out is is kind of fully uh, integrated and and kind of speaking to each other. What happens on one channel is reflected in another, and really begins to you know sing in much more harmony than it had done previously. Um. And yeah, I guess at this point, you know, just kind of getting all of your data and, and channels in a, in a good place isn't the end of it. It's all about now starting to beginning uh, the practices of being agile and innovative, because as we kind of know, you know, with the digital landscape is going to continue to evolve. There's lots of uh, probably new and exciting things waiting for us just around the corner. So having the business set up in this way um yeah sets up the business then to be able to adapt to whatever's lurking next um and whatever their customers may be uh looking for or kind of seeking out in the future so 
Yeah, now that you've uncovered where you sit within this framework, um, kind of a bit of an idea of the different stages. Um, the next stage is to start thinking about putting together an actual strategy that helps you move along the rankings and, and kind of advance yourself in this growth journey. So um, before diving deeper into any analytics or, or data projects, it's always worth remembering the foundations on which our integrated strategies need to be built. Um, so first and foremost, the, the business objectives always need to be considered and, and fully aligned with your KPIs. Um, in addition to this, we want to make sure that we're, we're gaining a, a really deep understanding of your, your current target and potential growth audiences. Uh, and finally, we also need to consider the, the wide variety of pathways that users might take en route to becoming or potentially not becoming, hopefully becoming uh, customers with your business. Um, so with these pillars in place, we can start to enhance our uh, kind of data collection and insights and help to future-proof our, our digital strategies, uh, which essentially then will allow us to set ourselves up for, for growth. Um, yeah, the way you see this is, you know, you have your pillars and then that really is kind of wrapped around with the data and insights that we're able to gather um, by kind of working through these maturity frameworks. Um, and we do see that the battleground for business growth is, is really all being about harnessing data that is usable. It's all well and good gathering all of the data under the sun about this and that, but the data needs to be actionable and usable and, and useful. So yeah, it's, it's kind of critical to plan out in advance what it is you want to understand and where that can be applied um, across your various strategies for different channels um, and how that can be you know, factored into um, you know, bidding on, on PPC, for example, or you know, lists for your email retargeting, whatever it might be, um, essentially making sure that that's all planned out and, and ready to go. Um, but yeah, developing this alongside your kind of digital maturity journey is going to be what empowers your business to to make these smarter decisions uh, and advance in, in the kind of longer term growth. Uh, so yeah, with this in mind, we're going to take a quick look through a like a sample roadmap that we've got, which uh, can help you advance along digital maturity scale. So at the first stage, um, what we might be looking at doing is just you know setting up that that basic digital infrastructure. At this point, you know it's just you know your Google Ads, you're setting up your your Meta accounts, etc. Uh, basic analytics, um, most likely working on a, a third party data uh, third party databases for for, for measurement. Um, from this point, we'll also be looking to implement the you know, foundational analytics. And have you know basic team training to be able to use that and understand it. Uh, moving into the emerging stage, we we'll start to gather and de develop the user segments based on available data and begin integrating that first party data, such as you know customer email lists. Um, and we'd also start looking at you know the cross channel marketing objectives. So. Can we then start adding in new channels, um, add in some uh, you know, marketing across different channels with, with CRM principles you know, baked into that as well? Uh, moving into the connected stage, um, it's going to be starting to look at customer behavior analysis, uh, digging into information obtained through, again, things like your customer list, CRM information alongside GA4 or other analytics platforms. Um, start looking at how we deduplicate cross-channel uh, tracking information and start you know, valuing touch points differently across different uh, stages of the journey. Uh, and potentially also at this stage, start integrating things like business data, for example, profit or our actual lead values with, with the marketing endpoints. Um, further from this, start looking at the personalization and optimization uh, kind of options available, see what we can do to uh, drive efficiency through AI-driven uh, automation. Um, and then finally, moving into the multi-moment stage, yeah, this is where we can start anticipate uh, anticipating customer needs, 
using machine learning, a artificial artificial intelligence to figure out what the what the customer is looking for, predict the value of this customer before they potentially made a purchase, and start getting really kind of uh, sophisticated with our use of data and and prediction of of kind of how people are going to behave in regards to the business. Um, and then yeah, final stage. We've kind of got all of our analytics and data set up in the best way possible. We're looking for um, now our options to be able to continue advancing along the journey, looking at what's coming next uh, in terms of you know development, um, you know changes in the industry, what's what's going to be you know lying around the corner next. So you, you set up with the data and information that the business needs to be able to adapt to these uh, changing needs of the customer or the business uh, or the industry with, you know, agility. Um, and yeah, eventually you're going to be at the forefront of, of kind of understanding what's going on with that in comparison to, you know, the competitors that you may be up, coming up against because uh, you've got that real-time data insight. You can see the impact it's having. You can, uh, yeah, measure the, the kind of impact of, different tests that you might be running uh, in real time and yeah, move forward much more quickly with the strategies that are going to ultimately drive the best growth for your business. Um, so yeah, it's a very quick whistle stop tour of uh, what is in the actual fact, a, you know, relatively long process for kind of walking through these different stages. Um, it very much is with a lot of these things, you know, a, a marathon, not a sprint. Um, but yeah, to, to kind of wrap things up uh, in terms of the, the points I've, I've kind of discussed so far, um, the digital landscape, as we as we all know, is incredibly complex and is evolving quicker now than than ever before, with many new challenges emerging. Um, what we tend to see is businesses hitting a performance plateau and struggling to break through that ceiling when focusing solely on channel optimization alone without wider insights feeding into that. Um, so the, yeah, the key to breaking through that ceiling and unlocking the next phase of growth uh, comes through this idea of, of digital maturity, uh, harnessing your customer data to understand the next smartest move that your business needs to take. Um, yeah, understanding where you are within the digital maturity benchmark will help enable you to start putting together a roadmap of actions uh, to connect the dots between your business, your customers, and your marketing efforts. Uh, and finally, yeah, reaching reaching the top of the framework isn't you know necessarily the end of the story. And in actual fact, it's quite often just the beginning. Um, reaching this point just means your business will have the incredibly powerful knowledge uh, at the fingertips, basically, of, of what's truly working and what isn't. Uh, and set you up to outperform the competition. Uh, from here, it's, it's all about remaining agile um, and adaptable to changes in the market as the landscape and, and the business continues to evolve. Um, and essentially, yeah, just, just getting your business set up in the, in the best way possible to uh, continue growing and uh, removing as many barriers um, within the kind of data landscape as possible and yeah, preparing for that next stage. So yeah, that's that's a wrap up from me. Um, thank you for listening, and yeah, happy to take any questions if anybody has anything. Thank you so much, Neil. I'm feeling um, a, a sort of maturity um, process coming on now. Smoking gone. I'm feeling a bit inadequate. I think I'm not that <laughs> into that. Um, really detailed, and, and as you said, I know you went through some bits quite quickly because there's a lot of process. I'm sure the audience will, will kind of fully understand that as well. Um, what are some of the sort of more common pitfalls maybe that the businesses encounter when they're, they're trying to implement this data-driven sort of marketing strategy and, and how can they overcome those? Yeah, so I think um, one, of the, one of the big ones is is trying to run before you can walk. Um, as I said, you know, there's a lot of detail in that, that presentation and it can be tempting just to try and uh, you know skip to the end and, and miss out some of the more foundational steps. Um, you know, really is about building up those foundations of um, data collection, um, analytics, and also building up the, the the skills within the team to be able to uh, you kind of decipher and, and analyze those into 
what what do become more more actionable uh, insights. Um, and another potential stumbling block is, I guess, yeah, talking about this kind of data roadmap, for example, a lot of the stages along there um, do require input from from different stakeholders within within the business. So when uh, yeah, starting to put together your roadmap for advancing along this type of framework, um, it's good to kind of think about the people that you'll need to speak to and bring into the process along the way. So, you know, talking about analytics, maybe there's an analytics team within your business who you need to speak to about uh, implementing new tracking or, you know, processes on the website to capture more um, user information, emails, uh, you know, things like this to, to kind of build up that first party data list or potentially it's, you know, partnering with a, a CRM partner to help uh, kind of organize and uh, get that data in a usable way, um, which is ready to kind of then build upon with with some of the more clever stuff you can do with it further down the line. Um, so yeah, quite a lot of, of kind of planning which needs to go into it, but yeah, certainly just trying to get it all down on paper and bring in the correct stakeholders at the right time, um, I'd say is generally the right way to go about it. Sounds like quite complex stakeholder management to do it thoroughly and, and breaking down silos, you know, in, internally as well to kind of bring all the relevant pieces of data together. Are there any sort of channels in particular that, that tend to benefit from, from advancing further along the maturity framework and, and really um, help to deliver more value? Yeah, so I think the, the kind of the aim of the framework is to um, develop across the board and yeah, really truly work out the value of, of different channels. Um, so yeah, I suppose depending on what you've been working towards previously, if that is a, a last click model, for example, um, the results that you'll get from from working the, through this type of um, project can be quite surprising. Um, and obviously, it does vary from from business to business and industry to industry. Um, but generally, do see more value will be attributed uh, higher up the funnel to channels like paid social, display, video. More of those, um, you know, maybe more traditionally brand building type activities. Yeah, the idea is that we can try and assign more value to those, which, you know, uh, instinctively we know drive value. But when we look at these uh, kind of outdated uh, attribution models, typically we'll be, you know, telling you something different. So I guess with the, the, the kind of idea of these projects is to empower conversations with, with other people in the business when they're saying, why why are we spending money on you know youtube advertising when we can spend all of our budget on ppc and you know the ROAS is 10 times as high it's trying to empower the, the decision making you know higher up in the business as well as um yeah within kind of marketing teams which you know it may have previously been uh kind of restricted to